I'm headed out to Carter's Lake. And that's in uh, northwest Georgia. I'm actually going to meet my stepson, Todd, at 11.30. And I might be a little late. But I don't know. Maybe not. Because the ninja's pretty fast. Well, on my way out now, and uh, I gotta stop and get some gas up here. I put some earplugs in. This uh, wind noise is something I always forget about when I when I head out to ride. I always forget to put earplugs in, and it it sure helps, you know, at the end of the day, because uh, this wind noise coming up through this Bell Qualifier helmet is quite excessive. And uh, I can actually still hear my music just fine with uh, the little foam earplugs in. So I'm excited today to get out and spend some time with Todd, get on the lake. Uh, that Carter's Lake is, is just a gorgeous lake up there. And I'm currently out on the, uh, the new, to me, but it's actually a used 2011 Kawasaki Ninja 1000. And I tell you, I got some really good first impressions on this bike. It is light, nimble, fast, comfortable. Well, I'll catch y'all in a bit. I got to uh, stop up here and get some Petroline. And I'll catch you on the next corner. I was pointing at the engine, but it's actually right there. I was trying to get my my sh shadow to do the pointing. But, yeah, this thing is sweet. I mean, I've got it used, and it's really, really clean bike. There's my little GoPro on the back. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Get a little bit of rhythm. a historic little town. There used to be an old guy up here named Oscar and he was like a multi-millionaire and he had collected gemstones and whatnot I guess. His story was he went around the world mining for gemstones and all very very rare uh, like fossils and I mean, he was telling us these stories of, of how he went and climbed these mountains and found these rocks and busted them apart to find these fossils. It was pretty interesting. But he, he had a warehouse in almost every one of these little strip mall side stores up here, all along the left side and right side. I think his, some of the stuff he, he has is still, is still here. They hadn't cleared it all out. Like, like all that marble right there. But all these stores right here, he had a monopoly down here. And he owed the IRS, the story had it, I don't know if it was in the paper or not, but the story had it that he owed the IRS like three million out of his multi-million. You know, they want their, they want their cut. And, he told him to bring a truck up. He was going to pay him cash 
So I guess he had it hidden under the mattress or mattresses. And that's a lot of money. But anyway, that's the, the little scuttlebutt on the history of on the history of ball grab. This thing is like hyper fast. And there's a lot of bikes like that, you know. Uh, the engine that's in this one is the same as the engine in the Kawasaki ZX-10R, which is a super sport bike. This one is uh, detuned a little bit from, from the 10R and that it has uh, a little bit less aggressive cams for lower end torque. So the 10R, I think the red line on that one's like, you know, 13 or 14,000. And uh, you don't get to start getting into the power band on that one until up around seven. So that's a really high revving machine. And this one is too. But this particular engine in this thing is just bulletproof. And Kawasaki has hung on to this design almost since the first inception of it way back when in 84 when the uh, first Ninja 900 came out which was the predecessor to the GPZ series line which is where I actually started my super my super bike my uh, sport bike life was back in my earlier days uh, somewhere around the age of 23 24 maybe I uh, I, I wound up purchasing a brand new GPZ 750 and then it wasn't long after that about a year after that I traded it in and saved up some more money and got the GPZ 750 turbo and at the time that was like the world's fastest it was you know coined as the world's fastest uh, street bike at the time and that was like 85 well, I stopped and got a couple sandwiches at Ingles. They look really good. They put a lot of jalapenos on there, so I hope Todd likes jalapenos. And they chopped them all up, so if he, there'll be a lot to take off if he doesn't. But I think he does like them. I tell you, I, I, I put new tires on this bike when I first got it. It had a Michelin uh, Pilot Road 4 on the back and a Pilot Road 3 in the front, an older one, like a 2012 model, so it had to come off. You gotta change tires every couple years. Um, they're usually wore out by then anyway, and the rubber will start getting a little harder on them, and your know, traction won't be as good and whatnot, so. But I changed over because of reviews to a 190.55 uh, Pirelli Angel GT, and I love them. It makes the bike feel so planted, and you know it's they're confident, inspiring for cornering, and uh, turn in is is real neutral. You know, as little as I know about all this, you can still feel it. You know, uh, you, you're, you, you get to be so tuned in with your bike. You know, I like the connectiveness uh, on, the, on the handlebars to the engine and the vibration. And, you know, your senses are so f f finite and... You know, the human body is amazing and all the all your nerves and fingertip nerves going down to your fingertips and, and uh, all your little feeling receptors and stuff. I mean you don't you don't realize it on a daily basis, but you have an, a, a, a natural ability to, to really tune in on things.
think this might be my turn into the marina here. Inner center, dam site, marina, boat ramp. Yeah. Let's try that. area a little sheltered from the wind it's kind of windy out here today Todd's wetting the line I think I think he's gonna catch a tree over there anyway 